Hello and welcome to the motherland of the Kardashians, Armenia. I'm here in Armenia's ancient capital city of Yerevan, and by ancient I mean the city's older than Rome. Armenia is a country with a very turbulent past as it's situated in a very vulnerable area here in the Caucasus region of Eurasia. Actually from where I'm sitting right now it's only about an hour's drive to the border of Iran. Turkey is located to the west but the borders have been closed for the past few decades due to the horrific events that took place in the early 1900s known as the Armenian Genocide. I'll get into that later in the video. And then you have Azerbaijan to the east. There's currently an ongoing war between Azerbaijan and Armenia over the landlocked region of Nagorno-Karabakh. So tensions are pretty high right now. Luckily Armenia gets a lot of support from Mother Russia, so things feel pretty stable at the moment. Armenia was indeed a Soviet state from 1921 up until 1991. So you'll hear a lot of people speaking Russian, Again, a lot of Soviet influence here, just like Georgia. But this video is gonna be a little different than my previous videos. With the increased military presence here in the city of Yerevan, I've been advised to not fly my drone at all. So instead, I'm just gonna be showing you what it's like to live in and visit the beautiful city of Yerevan. Let's go explore. I've just arrived at what they call the Cascade Complex of Yerevan. This massive stairway that gives you a really beautiful view of the whole city as well as Mount Ararat off in the distance. So let's go climb the Cascade Complex on this beautiful 100 degree day. So first impressions of Armenia, first and foremost, it definitely feels more like a desert, super arid and dry and very hot. Like I said previously, we're only an hour away from Iran. So far, everyone's been super nice. I had an absolutely terrible experience my first night at the hostel. People kept turning the lights on until 4 a.m. People were watching videos at full volume on their phone. So this morning I got up and I told them that I'm gonna switch hostels, find a private room. And they decided they'd put me in a private room for free, so. Shout out to them. So much appreciated. I could definitely use a good night's sleep. Anyone that knows me, if there's any type of snoring going on, I will not be able to sleep. So before Soviet rule, there were 264 mosques in all of Armenia. Now there is only one. That's right, the Soviets got rid of any type of Muslim worship and turned it back into a Christian nation. So this is the Blue Mosque of Yerevan. Like I said, the only mosque that remains in the entire country of Armenia. Pretty fascinating stuff. Also, a fun fact, way back when, Armenia was the first country in the world to officially be deemed a Christian nation. Good morning, just sitting here in a park enjoying my backpacker breakfast of bread and peanut butter, reminiscing on all the places I've already been on this trip. It's hard to believe I've already been to 16 countries on this trip. It started in Utah with my buddies Ryan, Jesse, Andrew, Connor, and Taylor, and that feels like a different lifetime. Then I went to California with my buddy Cody, 
saw all the beautiful nature of California, and then worked through Guatemala, El Salvador, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, and flew over to Europe, did England, Wales, Montenegro, Albania, Greece, and flew up to Bulgaria, Romania, worked all the way through Turkey, all of Georgia, and now I'm sitting here in a park in Yerevan, Armenia. So the remainder of my trip is officially booked. There's five countries left after Armenia. So I have Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Czech Republic, Poland, which I plan to do a video on Auschwitz, a place I've already been, but I'm really excited to document it for everybody back home. And then I'll finish up in Norway. So that makes 16 countries I've already been to and 21 in all by the time I finish the trip. So if you're interested, I do have a video on every country I've been to so far will continue to make a video for every country I go to. So it's been one heck of a journey so far. Still feeling pretty good, feeling inspired, and there's still a lot to see. So stay tuned. So after four miserable nights of no sleep in two different hostels, I now have my own private room for two nights. So it's yet another 100 degree day here in Yerevan. Got about a 50 minute walk and I'm excited to rest up and chill. Definitely in a much poorer side of town. Wow. You can see all these Soviet style buildings, Soviet apartments. You'll kind of see all around Yerevan. So look at the room. Absolutely perfect. Can't get too much of a street view, but you get the idea. So I'm going to sleep well. three days left here in Armenia. I woke up this morning and I yet again have food poisoning. I feel like I just got over food poisoning in Georgia and here I lay yet again just feeling absolutely terrible. I've been puking relentlessly all day through the night so I'm just gonna keep resting. Hopefully I can go out and see a few more sites that Yerevan has to offer because I feel like there's some very important things that need to be seen like the Armenian Genocide Museum. But as of right now, I cannot move. And yeah, we'll reassess tomorrow. So after a few days of lying in bed, feeling like absolute crap, it is officially my last day here in Armenia. I'm currently heading to a small lake called Vardavar Lake. It was recommended by the owner of the guest house that I'm currently staying in. So let's go check it out. I think it's pretty fair to say there are not many tourists in this area. I've been getting a lot of looks, definitely stand out like a sore thumb. But it's always cool to come to this type of place as well. I brought my bathing suit because I was told it's a nice lake to swim in on a hot day. But it doesn't look like I'm going to be swimming. I don't see anybody else swimming. So one of the main highlights of coming to Yerevan is the view of Mount Ararat in the distance. Unfortunately, I haven't had too good of a view. In fact, I've had zero visibility of the mountain. But Mount Ararat is actually in Turkey. It's technically territory that's gone back and forth between Turkey and Armenia. But Mount Ararat is a very sacred place for Armenians. It's actually said to be where Noah's Ark landed after the flood. So here's a picture of what it looks like on a clear day. So I'm now here in the far east of Kazakhstan in the city of Almaty, close to the Chinese border. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do as much as I would have liked in Armenia. There's a war going on with Azerbaijan. 
and unfortunately I got food poisoning again so I spent a lot of time in bed. One thing I'm really bummed I didn't get to check out in Armenia, in Yerevan, was the Armenian Genocide Museum. If you don't know much about the Armenian Genocide, it was really the first true mass genocide of the 20th century. In the early 1900s, the Ottoman Empire wiped out close to one and a half million Armenians. Not only did they kill so many Armenians, but those who survived were forced into Islam to become Muslim by the Ottoman Empire. So for those that don't know, the Ottomans are based in Turkey, the Turks. And to this day, Turkey doesn't recognize the Armenian Genocide. They claim it never happened. So pretty devastating. Um, definitely something to remember after visiting Armenia. This next video is going to be a two-week video here in the beautiful country of Kazakhstan. Again, it's a place that a lot of people in my home country of the United States know pretty much nothing about. So thank you for watching this video on Armenia, and I'll see you in two weeks' time here in Central Asia in the beautiful country of Kazakhstan.